Hello YouTube, my name is Josh and I want to welcome you to our channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Paperspace. In a nutshell, Paperspace is a cloud server that can stream your video games from that server to your devices at home. Now that device can be something simple, like your existing laptop, it can be a Chromebook, it can even be something really inexpensive like a Raspberry Pi, or it could be something a little bit nicer like an Nvidia Shield TV. So in this video, we're going to talk about the different locations that support Paperspace, we're going to talk about the different softwares that can be used to stream your games from Paperspace, and then at the end of the video, we're going to show you a little bit of gameplay so that you can get a feel for what it's like to play through Paperspace. Let's start by talking about locations. Paperspace has servers in the United States on the West Coast, the East Coast, and then also in Europe. Specifically, you'll find those servers located in California, New York, and in Amsterdam. So if you live close to one of these regions, then you should have a good experience through Paperspace. Next up, let's talk about pricing. There are several ways that pricing can be handled in Paperspace. Our favorite way is to use one of their public templates to pre-fill the server with information for us. So here's what I mean by that. A template is basically a way to deploy a server while having certain things in place already. There's a public template that's called Parsec, and even if you don't plan on using Parsec to handle your streaming, we'll talk about this more later, um, it's still a good choice because it pre-fills your server with the correct drivers and hardware so that you can start gaming. So if you look at the screen right now, you're looking at pricing for the public Parsec template within Paperspace. There are several options when it comes to the type of machine that you end up using, so let's break these down just a bit. The GPU Plus and the P4000 machines are for basic entry-level gaming, so they'll run almost anything that you throw at them, usually at up to medium, sometimes high settings, but usually medium. Now, if you're interested in ultra-quality gaming, then you're going to want to step up to the P5000 machine. That's really what it's all about. 1080p, ultra-quality, 60fps, you're going to get that with the P5000. Now you'll notice that there is also a P6000 machine listed here. It is a step above the P5000 machine, but you probably won't need it. I personally haven't run into any games that required that extra boost of power to run at ultra quality. So be aware of it. It's not something that you're likely going to need to use, but it is here if you do run into something that demands that. So here's the way that the pricing works overall. You've got your hourly price, you'll see that listed on each of those machines in the picture, and then you also have an ongoing monthly cost for the amount of storage that you choose to use. So again, looking at the example that you see on the screen, 50 gigabytes of storage for your games would be $5 per month. So your total monthly cost is your storage price, so let's say $5 for 50 gigabytes in this example, plus the number of hours you played multiplied by the rate for your server. So if you're using a P5000 machine, that's going to currently be 78 cents per hour. And then you add those together, and that's your total cost for the month. So now that you know where you can use Paperspace and how much it costs, let's talk about streaming software. Earlier in the video, we talked about how Paperspace is the hardware that powers your games, and then you also need to pair it with some sort of streaming software. And this is actually one of Paperspace's strengths. It's compatible with the widest range of streaming softwares compared to any other cloud gaming service. You can use Moonlight to handle the streaming, which allows you to stream to your iOS devices, like your iPhone or your iPad. You could use Parsec, which focuses on really high quality with ultra low latency and lets you stream to a computer or even something simple like a Raspberry Pi. And then you've also got Rainway, which streams things to your web browser and in the future also plans to support gaming consoles. Now with all that said, it's worth mentioning that with flexibility comes a little bit of complexity as well. It's really easy to deploy a Paperspace server, but from that point, you're basically just accessing a cloud desktop which means that you manually need to set up your streaming software, you manually need to install your games and services, so there is a little more that's involved compared to other services like GeForce Now. So when you think about the type of person that's going to benefit the most from Paperspace, there's really two things that stand out. So one is that somebody that wants ultimate control, that really wants to customize the experience, is going to have a really good time with Paperspace. The second thing is that Paperspace is really an hourly service. They do technically have a monthly option, but it's way too expensive to be practical. So if you think about using Paperspace, you're really thinking about paying hourly, which is great for somebody that wants to play occasionally and doesn't want to cough up a bunch of money up front for a whole month of something. So that's basically it in a nutshell. 
Paper Space is an hourly service. It's great for somebody that wants to play occasionally. It's also excellent for somebody that wants to customize the experience and really wants to control the whole thing. So it's super, super flexible. Now, you're probably wondering what it looks like to play a game on Paper Space. We've got you covered. That's coming up next. We're going to show you some gameplay on a P5000 server that's streamed through Parsec. So we've talked a lot about what Paper Space is and what it does and what you can do on it, but how is it? So how is it in 2019? The answer is that if you're a do-it-yourself kind of person, someone that is not afraid to tinker and that just enjoys a challenge and that really likes to customize things, then it's awesome. It's really what you're looking for. In contrast, if you're someone that's just plug and play, you want to push a button and go, then Paper Space may not be what you're looking for. It's also not the best option for people that are heavy, heavy gamers. So if you're going to play five to seven hours a day, the paper space is going to be a lot more expensive than other options. So what it really boils down to is that paper space is awesome for people that want to play on an hourly basis. It's also amazing if you want to tinker and if you're ready to invest some time in your setup. For this type of person, paper space is easily a five out of five. Now for anyone else that is just looking for something simple that they can just click a button and go, and if you're interested in playing a ton of hours, then this may not be your first choice. However, it's still worth a look. There's a lot to see here. Now if you are that person that is interested in digging into paper space even more, take a look in the description. You're going to find a link that will give you $10 off paper space if you're setting up a new account. It's enough to set up your server for free. You can try it out for a little bit completely for free and it's enough to give you a taste of what it's really like. And that's gonna be it for this video. Until next time, my name is Josh, and you guys have a good one.